Okay, the thing to remember is that our map is going right here in the map div. Nothing else on the HTML page really needs to be manipulated. So let's get to it. First thing we want to do though is set up in the CSS how big our map's going to be. Now on the tutorial, the leaflet tutorial, it says that you need to set a height and it can't be 100%. And that's true. It won't show up if you type ID map and put in a height of, you know, 100% here, it won't show up. It simply won't work. But there's a trick, and it's a really weird trick, but it makes sense due to inheritance. So if we write width 100%, height 100%, and before this, if we write HTML, body, separating them all with commas, then we will... Um, what this is doing, sorry, my mouse isn't working very well, is the HTML will be a, take up the full browser window, the body will take up all of that, and the map will take up all of that. And now our map will fill the full screen. I highly recommend when you're developing maps for the web, um, particularly since most people are accessing them on their mobile devices, to always use a 100% web map. If um, you're trying to embed it in a site or something, create a link so they can go to it and operate it on a 100% web map. There's nothing more frustrating than being on a mobile phone and trying to operate within an iframe type window on a web page that's already scrunched onto your screen trying to navigate a map. This is how you do it. Okay, so let's hit save. And now let's go to our empty page. Oh my, this is where it gets intimidating, right? One thing I wanna tell you is no one memorizes everything about Leaflet or any API. So make sure that you have a tab open with leaflet.js um, and go to their docs page. Sorry, I'm just going to scroll up because I can't get my mouse to work today. So hit docs and every command you'll ever need is here. And it's very useful. In this case, we're going to be installing a map. They often use examples. Good grief, my mouse. Um, and you can get some help with this. But let's start here. There are some that you need to know. The first thing you have to do is create a variable. You can call it whatever you want. Most people call it my map or map. I'm going to call it my map. So right now, this is simply just JavaScript. We're creating a variable in JavaScript. This is where it gets interesting. We're going to start calling in the leaflet API. And so the leaflet library, which has its own kind of code that we can use. Anytime you see the letter L before a line of functions or code, that means it's part of the leaflet documentation, the leaflet library. And that's how you can separate it from jQuery or JavaScript. This means that you're dealing with leaflet commands. We're going to create L.map. This is how you create every map in leaflet. And it's a function, so we're going to have to have the parentheses. And the first thing you're always going to want to write is map, so it knows to put it in our map div. And then we're going to give it some options. So what does every map need in order to be created? Well, first of all, you need a center point, right? So where is the map centered on? Otherwise, it doesn't know the, the central meridian of, or the, yeah, the central meridian of the map. So let's do this. Um, start with latitude, I'm going to do 45. Positives are north and east. Negatives are west and south. We'll do minus 98. And I'm doing something wrong already, but I want to show you. Um, if you forget, you can always go back, like I'm doing right now, because I got a little overzealous. But if you're not sure about how to write this, because it's hard to remember these parentheses and brackets and stuff, documentation page. If we scroll down just a little bit, we should see fairly quickly of course, now I'm missing it. Um, if we have center, center, lat long, undefined, the initial geographic center. Oh, well, it doesn't tell us what we need to use, but you need to use brackets. You can probably look up here in the example and see it. And there you go, you see the brackets. So if you get confused or if you get an error in your JavaScript, come to the docs page and look for the solution. What else do we need? We need to know how far in to be zoomed. At what scale are we mapping? Um, it goes from uh, up to 20, and 20 being zoomed in super far, way too far in most cases. I'm going to put 8. 
You can do other things. You can set the min zoom level. So like what's the minimum zoom level? Let's put it at three. And the max zoom, a whole variety of things. Let's put it at 14. Finally, you can even do things like zoom controls. Do you want those um, pesky little plus and minus signs on the screen? Or if this is going to be used on a phone and people are using pinch to zoom, get rid of them. So we can turn that to false. How do I know this? Again, documentation will be your friend. If we come here, you'll see all of these things. All of your options are here. All right. So we now have this map variable, but it's just a variable. We haven't done anything with it. Nothing's going to show up on our demo page. What we have to do is add some data to it so it actually has something to show. It's just a blank map right now centered on some place. This is enter the tile layer. What we're going to do is create a new variable. And we'll call this, um, I'm going to call this spider bee, and you'll see why in a moment. And this is equals L and Again, um, this this will be found in the documentation, but tile layers, this is the function to install a tile layer. So we're going to do a tile layer here, and we're going to need a string of some um, tile service provider. And then it's going to look a lot like the variable we created for map. So the string, where do you get a string for tiles? Well, luckily, Mapbox, a bunch of other services as well, Cardo, um, OpenStreetMap, they have a bunch of tiles created for you. What I like about Mapbox is, is you can create your own by uploading your photo. So I uploaded a photo drawn by my daughter called Spider, although it was using only black and yellow, and it created a style for me, and I immediately turned it into a style, and I published it. And if you go here on Mapbox Studio, you can scroll down, and click on leaflet and simply copy the code to get these tiles into your map. Mapbox has made it exceedingly simple to do this. Let's go back here. We're going to paste this in here. Attribution. All right. Um, we have that. We should set a min zoom three, max zoom 14, just to match it up so the tiles don't load unnecessarily. And one other important thing at the end here, we've created a variable called spider bee. We can either just write add to map here, or we can actually write the variable name and tell it to add it to the map. You don't actually have to give this tile layer a variable name. The reason I do, however, is because later I can create a button that turns, uh, adds or removes this variable to the map. So I can create a button that turns this whole tile set on or off. Um, so that's why I do it right here. All right, let's hit save. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. I'm always forgetting something. Looks like max zoom isn't supported or something. Let's go here. Let's hit leaflet demo. All right. We got an error. Yep, maybe it's just min zoom that's supported, or maybe not. All right. Ta da! Nothing's really showing, but we can see that the colors changed. Hmm. Ah, I know what it is. Da da! I normally name my maps map. I named it my map here. I named it map down here, so it's not adding it to my map. Let's see if this solves it. Ta da! So there's a little debugging. Um, make sure you use consistent naming conventions. I changed it to my map just to be a little different and to try to not confuse you with the div name. Um, I shouldn't have done that because I confused myself. I didn't say that this was a pretty style. It's something that took two seconds to make, but I kind of like it. It's based off my daughter's artwork of a spider that looked a lot like a bee. And now we have a functioning map from a, a tile set that we created from our own art. It's zoomed to the right level. Let's make sure it's can't zoom too far out. See, it won't let me zoom further out than this, which is pretty far out. Far out, man. 
And that's as far in as I can zoom. All right. In the next lesson, we're going to do some crazy other stuff, including um, adding a GeoJSON layer. See you shortly.